que eh, son dos ingenieros que vienen desde so Bolivia, Bolivia. Eh, nos van a traer, o sea, presentar la They implementación IPv6 de un ISP en Bolivia. Ellos son eh, de Entel Bolivia, o sea, ahí está Marco Nequid, Edwin Pereira, Edwin que es el jefe de la red de transmisión y datos de la empresa nacional de telecomunicaciones Bolivia. Entel Bolivia, uh, y Intel eh, Bolivia. se acompaña de eh, Claudia Nilda González Claudia Maldonado, González profesional Maldonado, core, core en el área de operación y mantenimiento area, también de Entel Bolivia. Así que eh, un aplauso para Bolivia. ellos y so, a escucharlos. Good morning, everyone. We are here to share our experience in the process implementation IPv6 and our ISP in Bolivia. So let's start. Once again, we are here to share a bit the experience that we had in our ISP when implementing IPv6. Let's start. So as a background, up to 2016, our ISP had uh, fixed uh, internet or land-based uh, uh, internet uh, services. Uh, um, uh, they w they w were FTTX, uh, and uh, no, in uh, uh, 2016 we started with uh, deploying FTTX uh, triple play with internet on native IPv4. 
so everything was on native IPv4 at the time. So this deployment was so huge and massive that in 2018, um, and the IP um, addresses got depleted, so we had to start uh, the deployment of uh, IPv6. Um, so for clients, we uh, had a uh, um, dual stack. Um, as, as the uh, clients had PPPoE, we decided to continue with that scheme in VRAS and uh, BNG and uh, VRAD. So as to the IP addresses, we were assigned five uh, mask um, um, 17 and one uh, uh, slash 22, but we had very few addresses. In 2013, we were assigned a slash uh, 22 with IPv6. It, is, it was then that we started training people and seminars by the ISP staff, and some of these resources were given by LACNIC and other providers. This really helped us during the, the uh, implementation. As a background, the uh, ISP network had uh, MP, BGP, MPLS, OSPF uh, version 2 and IPv4, in addition of uh, the service, well, the services that we had, uh, we had ADSL, FTTX mobile, and they were uh, in IPv4 and uh, the international peering and were also IPv4. We were only IPv4. So to be able to deploy IPv6 during 2018, we had to make changes in our network, changing the router reflectors. We had a two for IPv4 and two for IPv6. We also changed some PEs and BNGs, validating that the OSs would support a dual stack. In addition, in all the network, we configured six PE and six VPE transporting IPv6 encapsulated in the MPLS through the IPv4 core. For the implementation, we also had uh, to do um, to consider all the regions in Bolivia and uh, the services offered. So, as you see on the slide, uh, slash 36 services were assigned for the cities and uh, for the services slash 40 in IPv6. Now, for the implementation, the first thing that we requested, we asked our service providers to use uh, um, uh, dual stack, but we requested whenever possible to use the interfaces, one for IPv4 and another for IPv6. That was um, to see differential um, uh, traffic uh, statistics. So in addition, we could also have a change in the network. We put all the internet uh, uh, services in an independent network. We call it uh, the VGI. Here we, in the slide, we'll see some examples of a configuration to the, for the router reflectors. And here we have for international uh, outbound uh, traffic, and we can verify each interface for IPv4 and IPv6. In 2018, we had uh, a model of uh, testing where we could validate the cases of use for IPv6. We see that We see the use cases for clients of ISP, in this case, for clients of uh, uh, fixed internet, uh, landline internet uh, of the corporate world, and uh, for massive PPOE clients. And we validated the transition of dual stack. So in all the network, we can transport IPv4 and IPv6 at the same time. In this model, we don't apply anything of CGNAT. 
Perfect. Good morning. So here, let me say that in the execution of uh, the model, we can establish the configuration models for the types of clients, corporate and massive. So how were the services left? So in the corporate uh, um, internet, we applied dual stack, uh, I, native IPv4 and IPv6, and applying dual stack between the uh, routers and the CPS. A lang and one of uh, 52 and 54 respectively, 64 respectively. The interfaces are in a dual stack and uh, the static routes with IPv4 and IPv6 and the static route in IPv6 is distributed in the DDG of the internet so that it can be reached by uh, all the world. In this point, the in DNS, we activated the CORA and the interfaces with IPv6, and the um, and in the router closer to the internet, it was also distributed to the internet so that it could be reached by the rest of the network. And as to the massive um, service. It was established that it should be done under the PPOE model, and all the clients uh, are configured in uh, uh, CGNet, but uh, the uh, idea is for um, IPv6 to be native and uh, IPv4 through CGNet. So in the router, of, uh, there's a link um, between um, the verified net so that the traffic may go directly to um, the uh, cloud and the gateway is in the CGNAT. So IPv4 goes through CGNAT. In the radius, I activated the uh, fields of IPv6 to have all the IP assignment uh, registries. And going on with the PPOE, um, we delegate uh, slash 64 and 56 uh, in one and lang respectively in IPv6, and we also have the DHCP v6 to assign the DNSs. So as we said earlier, by the route by default uh, in IPv4 is directed by CGNAT, uh, and in IPv6 to the uh, border peering uh, routers. Here we have, here we show the configuration that is applied in the CPs. In one, we have uh, activated dual stat, uh, uh, stack and uh, for obtaining the global uh, unit as we have um, uh, ICB6 um, and the model is with a, a prefix delegation in LAN. We have the router advertisement service so that everybody can uh, uh, put their uh, local um, uh, address. And here we show how the state of uh, the uh, connection of the CPEs, where the global unicast address uh, has uh, any address and uh, the DNS addresses. So going on with uh, the uh, implementation in 2022, we integrated the dual stack with the route servers of the IXP in Bolivia, generating um, IPv6 internal traffic with all the participants that uh, have it activated. As to the traffic up to the last um, uh, uh, year, we had uh, 327 gigas in uh, uh, GP and uh, in IPv6, that is 27 percent, and uh, um, the rest is in IPv4. 100 percent of our massive clients use IPv6, those are about 600,000. 
here. Um, this is a looking glass showing all the peers in IPv6 with uh, um, all the clients. And let me tell you that in terms of security in 2019, we uh, implemented an anti, a local anti-DDoS shield for IPv6. And one of the, some of the problems we found was that many contractors, the people that uh, sometimes deconfigure IPv6 because they attribute the problems to this protocol because of ignorance. Some corporate clients do not apply IPv6 100% because they don't know about it. And some of the clients that normally have a, a Wi-Fi access point, uh, usually they implemented in IPv4, so they cut IPv6 in the internal network. So future steps. We already have a pilot uh, for the mobile network with uh, about 5 million uh, users and uh, with 2,000 use, uh, users. And we hope that by uh, the end of next year, we will be able to provide services to 5 million users. Here we have a, a mobile phone where you see that it's been assigned IPv4 and IPv6. We're going to continue with uh, campaigns to um, uh, uh, reduce uh, uh, IPv4, increase IPv6, and we want the shield to be in the service of our transit providers. So that's what we wanted to tell you about the experience that we have had in the implementation of IPv6. If you have any question, we are ready to answer. Sí, eh, yes. vamos a tener espacio para we are tres going to have room for eh, están, three eh, Henry, questions. Jordi, Henry, y hay una pregunta Jordi, remota and también. there is a remote sí, question que... too. Un minuto cada uno, vamos. So, a minute, everybody. I am from the University of Campinas. Congratulations for your work. And uh, the history, well, we see that we've studied for 10 years, starting from 2013 to 2023. And I think that those 10 years, uh, I hope that this was enough time that many of us here see the need to implement IPv6. And you may imagine that you are 10 years late in the implementation of IPv6. And another idea is that those that are considering uh, to implement it now, please think that it will take you 10 years until you can implement IPv6. That's a consideration. But the question really is, I realized that you are um, uh, using a DDoS uh, shield. Do you have, have you had any uh, security interest already measured in the DOS, and what do you think that uh, that uh, shield will do? Do you think it will be necessary? Do you think that you will are do you anticipate any problems with DDoS and IPv6 in the future? Well, yes, we have detected some attacks, but we haven't had any strong incidents so far. We haven't detected any serious problems. There is a solution of the shield, as I said. We detect, uh, we can uh, um, change the route of the traffic and we can mitigate, but to stop if uh, there were any issues as a service, it should come from our service provider. Thank you. Jordi Palet, I wanted to ask you, I've tried to hear it, but I don't know whether maybe you didn't mention it or I missed it, whether prefix assignment, I understood that it was a slash 56. I recommend it should be a slash 48, but that's another debate. That is persistent. Each client receives always the same prefix. No, no, no. It's PPPOE and it's stateless. Because I've seen that you had it buried. I don't know whether each client has the same password, username and password. Yes, we did a lab to try to do a static assignment. Now, 
This we are developing our system, uh, provisioning our FTTX, and it. We, we yes, we are considering. So far, it's dynamic, because I consider that it is very important to pursue that. I don't know whether you know RIBER 690, or if not, write it down to look for it, because the many problems with CPEs, if you have uh, an electric flaw and the CPE is restarted, the customers will continue to have their addresses, and if it's not static, they won't have an access for some minutes. So you, we won't avoid problems. Most of the CPEs uh, don't implement it. You told me that you are using DDHP uh, v6. Uh, that's not the best. Uh, many OSs don't use them. You have to use RDNS. We'll have to see whether the CPEs have that uh, feature. And if not, you should. Uh, and so. The support of uh, IPv6 by APs, uh, sometimes it's as simple as ticking for them to support local link multicast. Um, and uh, in the implementation, don't think of a dual stack. It is much uh, less expensive uh, for 64x lat is much cheaper and what you have to do in the mobile network to implement 464x lat talk to Apple already don't leave it for the last moment because sometimes in contact with Apple to activate in the IPv6 profile it would take months yes precisely in the pilot uh, we uh, study, we detected that, that it was easy to deploy in other uh, brands, but in Apple. I'm going to be there in the break and the rest of the week. If you have any questions, I'll be very happy to help you. Thank you. Muy bien, Thank you gracias a Jordi por Thank su contribución, you, a ustedes por, por, eh, por su presentación. Hay una pregunta remota de Eduardo Cuña que dice, para una eh, topología IPPOE, ¿cuál es el tamaño uh, mínimo uh, máximo uh, para uh, la delegación uh, de prefijos para One Land que indican las buenas prácticas de configuración? Um, base uh, 56 in, and LAN and uh, 64 for one for corporate 52 in LAN. Yes, but we can uh, make the changes to the segment uh, slash 32. Okay. Bueno, pues. Ya estamos so, un poquito pasado de tiempo. Eh, un aplauso para ellos.